The values of rule of law, uh, justice and anti-corruption are really appealing and that's why millions of Ukrainian citizens went to the streets four years ago to protect the European choice and hope that uh, uh, so many in the society cherish. And over time, as Ukraine, since the collapse of the Soviet Union, was always uh, partially free, partially democratic. Uh, and in the post-Euromaidan period, what is interesting is that we see the emergence of new groups, voluntary groups that support veterans of the war in the East, that support internally displaced people. And uh, millions of Ukrainians supported those groups by donations. Over 40% Ukrainians donated to uh, voluntary associations and 15 percent are active members and actively participate in civil society. The driver for many changes in Ukraine comes from the bottom. Uh, the citizens express this demand for reforms and it's up to the leadership to deliver. We looked and asked civil society leaders what is the main purpose of your organization and the majority of them said that it's to influence policy, it's to consolidate citizens around interests, and it's to hold politicians accountable. And you can see those numbers. They are quite high compared to a typical uh, purpose of a civil society organization, which is to deliver some social services. So Ukrainian groups are very much advocacy driven, and they understand that it's important to hold government to account and to ensure its, its transparency. Now, if we compare the difference between Kyiv-based and regional groups, because it's interesting, we see that in the region, uh, civil society groups see as their main purpose to build social trust, to build social capital, and to promote democratic values in the society. Uh, that is quite striking because there seem to be less focus on advocacy. And why it is important, as Ukraine decentralizes, and this is one of the key reforms that started after Euromaidan, it's crucial that organizations on the ground also understand that they have to play an active role in oversight of policy, in decision making, and they need to have training and funding to build this capacity to hold government to account in their local communities. So what happened in Ukraine, thanks to a very vibrant and robust coalition of civil society, reformists in government, reformists in parliament, technical assistance from EBRD, and some expertise that came to Ukraine from Georgia, because Georgia already went through this process, Ukraine completely revamped its public procurement system. It has established a new digital portal called Prozoro, or Transparent in Ukraine, with the slogan that everybody can see everything. And all government agencies, from national to local governments, are now complied to the usage of this system. They have to procure everything from pencils to schools through this system. And it has been amazingly effective in cutting corruption, cutting the middleman, saving public funds. This system has been voted actually the best in the world, surprisingly. So Ukraine really leapfrogged from being very corrupt in public procurement to being an example, not only in the post-Soviet space, but for Europe. And it has saved over one billion US dollars of public funds. So we could see how innovation from a, a private sector, which was just a trading portal, could become a, pub a new public service with active participation of civil society, where Transparency International a very well-respected international organization was lending its dividend of trust to make sure that people believe in the new system and see it as a credible tool.